If you haven't already, you're going to hear a lot of numbers and statistics about mass shootings in the coming days. Right, they come pouring at you in cases like this. It can be very confusing. We admit that. Might even be alarming for some of us here in North Texas. But we want to take a moment to try and break through the noise tonight. The I team's Ginger Allen. You have been digging into several databases mm -hmm. uh, to kind of you know winnow this down to something we can all understand and something that makes sense to us, even though the numbers are not necessarily good to look at. And we hear so many different numbers right, right. now. It really does get confusing. Who do we believe? Exactly. Yeah. I hope I can simplify that for you. We did try to do that. We looked at three different main research databases. We first looked at the mass shooting tracker. Now, this tracks when more than four people are shot, not killed, but shot. It finds so far in 2023, <laughs> as of right now, we have had 249 mass shootings in the U.S. That's almost two a day. Now, the second study we dug into tracks when four or more people are killed. And so far this year, that has happened on average more than once a week involving guns. For you deep-rooted Texans out there right now, this story may take you back decades. August 1st, 1966, a Marine veteran walked out on the deck of the University of Texas Tower. He shot and killed 15 people and injured 31 others. At the time, it became one of the deadliest massacres in modern history. It was what people think of when they hear, when they hear mass killing. Dr. James Allen Fox says recent history has obviously changed that. He's been tracking cases for more than 40 years. Through a partnership with the Associated Press and Northeastern University, they formed a database following mass killings. That's cases involving four or more fatalities. Here's the latest on mass killings involving guns in 2023. The accurate number, according to what you are tracking, is 22 mass killings. Yesterday was the 22nd. That's right. More than we've had any other year, at least since 2006, and probably forever. I've been studying this topic for 40 years, and I've never seen this kind of a count. In a typical year, he says there are 24 mass killings involving guns. And in a typical year, he says six of those are in public places. Listen to 2023 so far. So far this year, we've already had six. That's almost one a week. And the database shows Texas has had three this year and nine since last year. It is important to note we do have a large population here. But the number of people killed in each event also brings us back to Texas. Texas, besides having a number of mass shootings, you have some of the larger ones. You can see from this map, the size of the circles uh, reflect the number of people killed. So of course, Uvalde, uh, El Paso, Santa Fe, the high school. As you look at the number of victims killed per incidence on this chart. Three of the largest seven occurred in Texas. That's three of the largest seven mass killings tracked nationwide since 2006. Next, the IT team asked, where do most of the incidents occur? The location. Nationwide, researchers found 45% of mass killings occur inside residents or private homes. But the second most common place is commercial retail or entertainment locations. Now, that's a pretty broad group of uh, locations. It can include restaurants, uh, shopping malls, stores like uh, uh, Walmart. Lastly, we wanted to know who are the offenders. Dr. Fox's research finds most mass killers are men, 20 to 34 years old and predominantly white. He says, according to a study in this journal, the offenders are often dealing with a relationship issue, perhaps personal or employment or a financial struggle, and they plan for months. Dr. Fox tells us for decades, identifying mass killers has been complicated because profiles often involve warning signs or characteristics shared by most Americans. So just what are those crisis signs? That brings us to the third database the I-Team dug into for you. The Violence Project researches profiles and it finds more than a third of mass shooters show five or more of the signs you see there on your screen. So increased agitation, abusive behavior, isolation, losing reality, depressed, mood swings, inability to do a daily task, and paranoia. Can I just throw out though that Dr. Fox says, you know, all the common characteristics you just talk about, doesn't it make it harder for us to kind of, you know, figure out? Because I, I think we all see a little bit of that in everyday life. Do <laughs> when we? you yeah. look at that list, right. yeah. What do you do? Exactly. And and I want to go back to the tracker and the map that we saw because if we talk about the number of incidents that we've had in Texas and mm -hmm. the number, our population number, we've had a lot 
in our state, in our area. Can you talk to us a little bit about how that tracks and how we calculate that? I can, and I'm glad you've asked. I've actually got it right here. The only reason I know is because I went back to Dr. Fox and asked for just that, and he calculated it for us. So when you adjust the rates for population here in Texas, we live in a very populated state, following this latest shooting, Texas ranks 19th for number of incidents nationwide, and we rank 12th for number of victims killed. Mm. And so we're higher than the nation's average. Can I just be honest in saying two things? Thank you for all the research on it. Second thing, I hope we never have to hear from you on this again. Yeah. You oh, know, my goodness. Can I and be real? It's so true. Yeah. I said to Dr. Fox, is your database ever going to become empty? And he said, we hope so. Yeah, I hope we, so, too. That's the biggest hope. Thank, Thank you, Ginger. Ginger. You bet.